All right, we're back. We're talking with two former Muslims that came to know Christ. Their family disowned them. They went on their education to get their doctorates, their teaching in Christian seminaries, written two best-selling books. But we're talking about Islam's beliefs about salvation. That Jesus was speaking of the messenger. And so that's why the Shahada, the, the central confession of Islam, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Muhammadullah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, there is only one God, Allah, and huh? Muhammad is his final prophet, his greatest prophet. of the messenger and so that's why the shahada the, the central confession of islam bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim muhammadullah ar-rahman ar-rahim there is only one god allah and muhammad is his final prophet his greatest prophet mm. hmm. Hmm. Liberty University has announced it will replace Dr. Ergen Kanner as Dean of Liberty Baptist Theological Seminary. This comes after a university board investigation into allegations that Kanner lied about growing up as a Muslim. Jeremy Mills has been following this story, and Jeremy, the school says Kanner will stay on as a professor. He is, after all, one of the most popular professors at LU Noreen, but these allegations appear to have damaged his standing at the university. The four-member board says it could find no evidence showing Dr. Kanner was not a Muslim who converted to Christianity as a teenager, as some has suggested. But they did find discrepancies in other facts about his past. School officials would not go on camera for this story, choosing only to release a written statement. Kanner will step down as dean when his contract expires. June 30th. Reporting live in the Lynchburg studio, Jeremy Mills, ABC 13. If there's such a thing as a controversial lightning rod Baptist minister, then one is headed to North Texas. He's the former head of Jerry Falwell's Liberty Baptist Seminary, and his claims of having terrorist ties have clouded his credibility and perhaps his future. Channel A Spreadship has more tonight. Let me tell you what the last two weeks of my life have been. I got hit with oranges. Not what you might expect to hear from the Dean of Theology at Liberty Baptist Seminary, but it's part of the Ergun Kanner mystique and legend of being raised a radical Muslim in Turkey and an enemy of America. I hated you. That may be harsh, but as Dr. Hayes told you, I was my madrasa, my training center was in Beirut. And he says he was trained to be a terrorist when his family moved. And so we came to America. It was 78. Once here, Kanner says he converted to Christianity, then rose to national prominence after 9-11. That's when Tom Rich of Jacksonville, Florida, first heard his message. He said, this is a quote, that he was trained to do that which was done on 11 September. Okay, which means, that, uh, in no uncertain terms, I was trained to be a terrorist. You know, I was raised to be a terrorist. But last summer, Kanner's story started to unravel when skeptics found evidence that despite his claims... And I walked into the Stells Road Missionary Baptist Church in Columbus, Ohio, in full gear, full gefia, and a Quran. The self-proclaimed young jihadist actually moved to the U.S. from Sweden, not Turkey, in 1969, not 1978, and grew up not carrying a Koran, but looking and acting like most every other kid his age. The discrepancies proved so damaging, Kanner was demoted at Liberty and is now headed for North Texas to become vice president at Arlington Baptist College, home to 200 students and maybe a not-so-welcoming staff. 
one of which tells News 8, I find it reprehensible that the leadership of Arlington Baptist College would hire a man who is very clearly profiteering from the tragedy of September 11. Back in Florida, blogger Rich says giving counter credibility takes away from the church. Really calls into question the integrity of the organization that he uh, represents. And, um, and it makes it harder to spread the gospel to, to people when they know that Southern Baptists actually are not holding this guy accountable. Canner did not respond to our request for an interview, but is on the record saying he is only guilty of uttering discrepancies and making pulpit mistakes. Let's not go there. Okay. Uh, speaking of Emir Kanner, um, Ergen has has come out from hiding. Uh, you know, we had mentioned just a couple weeks ago that um, Ergen Kanner has been pretty quiet of late. And he got down there to Arlington Baptist Bible College and the guy has switched all his New American Standards over to King James Version, I'm sure. And... Uh, uh, either that or he's just become very, very good at canterizing all of his appearances. You know, making sure that, okay, if I'm coming, don't tell anyone, swear your entire congregation to secrecy, uh, black out your website, um, install uh, electronic surveillance equipment so that you know if there's anybody there with a active MP3 recorder or anything like that. Uh, and uh, maybe that's how he's doing it, you know, because we've, we've, we have, uh, uh, Come up with the term canterize. Uh, to canterize uh, a sermon it means that you, well, our recording equipment didn't work today. Uh, we forgot how to upload stuff to the internet. <laughs> that kind of stuff. It's still just amazing to me uh, that instead of just coming out and saying, hello, I lied. Okay, I'm sorry. I confess, I would like to be restored, I promise to never do it again, I realize it was wrong, etc., etc. Um, <clears throat> instead, it's, I'm going to stick by this, I'm going to stick to my guns, I refuse to engage with anyone who would expose me, but I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing, I'm going to stay low for a while, and then we'll eventually be able to come back, and everyone will have forgotten, because, look, that was 2010, man, that's so 2010. This is 2013. Three years have passed. That's longer than Jesus' ministry, for crying out loud. Can't we all? I, we, we had a discussion on Facebook yesterday. you got to forgive him. you got to forgive him. He doesn't have to ask for repentance. Now, the guy did say, well, what I mean by that is that you shouldn't be mad at him. Now, I feel bad for Ergen Kanner. I, I feel pity for Ergen Kanner. But the guy did admit, well, I, I don't think he should be restored to his position. Okay, so what do you mean forgiven? 
I mean, you, you're talking about partial forgiveness here. You're talking about your own attitude and not allowing a root of bitterness to grow up within you. That's fine. But we're talking about a situation here where there are, there are people who are in ministry, they're in responsible positions of ministry, who are doing everything in their power to continue to aid and abet the canner cover-up. It's still going on. And they are just, you know what? They're taking the same political tack that the left has taken and recognizing People's memories are very short. All they care about is what's going on right now. This was three years ago. Nobody cares. Anyone who brings this up, it will immediately be attacked. And I have been already. And talking about it now, I can just see the people firing up the Facebook pages, firing up the Twitter. How dare you? Look, you've just, you're just you just focused on us. Um, folks, there's been no resolution. And it, I really wonder, how many people live today would have, would have just completely given up on poor Joseph there in the prison. Because, you know, oh, three years have passed, and so it's just, just you, don't, you don't talk about this stuff no more. And what I'm referring to, of course, is the fact that um, yesterday, uh, well, I think it was the day before yesterday, late, late on the, uh, Tuesday, I think, people started sending me little tweets and said, hey, guess what? Um... John Ankerberg is having Aragon and Emir Canner on again. I think they were first on in 2003. And, of course, this was right in the middle of where they were just spouting every kind of lie. And what would be fascinating, what would be fascinating, would be to compare what they say now with what they said in 2003. You want to see how truthful I and others have been? Listen to how the story changes. Listen to whether Ergen starts talking about having been born in Turkey and uh, debating uh, imams in Arabic in mosques and uh, his dad uh, coming over with his multiple wives and uh, learning English, uh, watching the Dukes of Hazard And uh, let's see if all that has just gone. And if it has, I wonder why. Must have been those bloggers in their parents' basements. Uh, somehow got to them, I guess, right? Hmm. Uh, what, what, what was what was Liberty's wonderfully politically correct way of putting it? Did not find any factual misrepresentations or factual errors or something along those lines. Nice way of saying, oh, well, we don't think he really lied, but we don't want to say that because it's pretty obvious he did. So on the John Ankerberg um, Facebook page, even even a, a Muslim, when John Ankerberg said, just finished a wonderful new series of John Ankerberg show, Thanks, Dr. Ergen and Emir Kanner. Pray many Muslims will come to Christ. Uh, almost immediately, a Muslim said, how can we trust someone who lied about his own mother? And then has a link to some of the lies that Ergen Kanner has talked about his own mom. You know, she took the hijab off as she got into the baptistry. According to Emir, once the divorce took place, she became a hippie. Hippies generally don't wear hijabs. You know, I mean, hello? Um... I pointed out in writing to John Ankerberg, I've, I wrote John Ankerberg back in 2010 when he first put out his defense in July of 2010 of, of the canners and said, could you interact with some of the information we've provided? Here's some links. Never heard back. Never heard back. Um, evidently, John Ankerberg now is, is invested uh, to, to admit that they've done two series of programs well, it would have been one thing in 2010 to, to look at the information and go, wow, okay, all right, well, you know, we didn't know this at the time. Uh, this information wasn't available then. That would have, would have been easy to say, sorry that, that this is the case. We still feel that much of what Dr. Kanner said is valuable and, and useful information, which is true, something I have said many times. How many times have I pointed out uh, Kanner's approach, his rejection of the camel method, for example? I agree. He's right. The Cannell method is not the way to go. Okay, you know, just because Aaron Canner says it doesn't mean it's false. But to have them back on now, and yesterday, one of the questions I asked, and I would be overjoyed if this was the case. Overjoyed if this was the case. Did he ask the questions that needed to be asked? Did he raise these issues? I can... I. I, I, 99.9% of my heart and mind says no. No. 
Um, there's no way that the canners would have shown up if John Ankerberg was going to ask them the real questions because they have refused to engage these questions. They will not answer the questions. We've had videos up asking both Eric and Emir Canner questions for uh, two and a half years, more than two and a half years now. They will not answer because to do so would be admit that they were lying. That would reforce, force them to confess, and that's, you know, there you go. So I really doubt that uh, the real issues were, were dealt with, but I bet that still, despite that, they were at least mentioned in, as I said, the difference in the telling of their own story. That has to have been the case now. But then again, I could be surprised, and who knows, maybe some of the stuff that he's been exposed on will end up back on the John Ankerberg show. I don't know. All I know is that when I talk to Muslims who know about this situation, and I refer to people who have come to Christ out of Islam, their response is, oh, you mean like Ergen Kanner? I, what, what can you say? What can you say? To, to do this again is to, is to function upon the assumption that evangelicals have no more interest in truth than the general average American citizen does who allows things to just, you know, once it's more than about six months ago, does it really matter? Doesn't really matter anymore. We are so, we, our attention spans are so short. Our memories so shallow. And we don't forget. We, we don't remember. We forget. And that's how it works. And unfortunately, they're probably right. They're probably right. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. That's all there is to it. So, um, I wonder when that's going to show. I, I wonder when that's going to air. I'll, I'll, I'll be interested in seeing um, what, uh, what comes up as to when this is going to air and... Um, I, I would be interested in, because I don't even know where, it, I don't even know how you watch the John Ankerberg show anymore, to be honest with you. 